The new ATTR function in CSS is one of my favorite additions. For example, let's say that we have an attribute, in our case, data width, that we want to use inside of our CSS. Well, now we can do that with this ATTR function. All you do is type in the name of the attribute. In our case, it is data width. And if we click save, you'll notice it doesn't actually work right away. And that's because you also need to specify a type for this value. Otherwise, CSS is just going to interpret it as a string. And a width obviously requires us to pass along some type of length. So what we can do here for our type is we know that this is a pixel value. So we can type in px. And now this is using 100 pixels as our width. If I go into my index HTML and I change this to 200, you can now see we have a 200 pixel wide box. Change it to 400. Now we have 400 pixels wide. So this gives me tons of flexibility to be able to use these properties inside CSS. I can also take this a step further. For example, let's say I wanted to do a color inside of here. So we'll just say data color, and we're just gonna set that equal to blue. So now I want this to be a blue box instead of a red box. Well, we can go into our styles and we can use that right here inside of our border, where I can say that I wanna use ATTR. In our case, it is called data color. Now, when I save again, you'll notice the color completely disappears, and that's because I need to specify a type. And if we need a type that's more complicated than like pixels, REM, and so on, we can come in here with the type function, which just takes in a type syntax. And inside of CSS, when you define syntax, it's always going to be inside of angle brackets like this. In our case, we're using the color syntax. And if I give that a save, you'll notice now our border has that blue color around it, because we've defined what the type of this variable is, as well as the name of where that variable is coming from. Now we can also specify a fallback value by just placing in a comma right here and then specifying whatever value we want. So let's say that our fallback value for this is going to be yellow. And we come into our index HTML and we remove our data color. You'll now see that this box will change to a really bright yellow color because it's using the fallback since it can't find anything for that data color property. So essentially this attribute just has the three sections inside of it. We have the name of the attribute, we have the optional type that we can pass along, and then finally we have an optional fallback value we can pass along. And if you wanna learn more about this attribute property and all the different things you can do with it, I have a full video that'll be linked at the bottom of the screen.